Hello everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to another edition of Out and About. I am here with Star Sullivan, he's the superintendent of the water treatment plant. Star, thanks so much for taking the time. You're welcome. So we're in an unusual place, people. We're in a forest of poplar trees. And um, Star, you want to tell people a little bit about the space that we're in, which is a pretty remarkable area. It is. So the city leased this from Harvey and Mitzi Klaus uh, four years ago to, uh, to grow these trees. The primary purpose, at least for me, to grow in these trees is we take out about a million gallons of treated effluent a day to water these trees between May 1st and September 30th. And the reason is, that although we have a high quality of effluent we discharge to the Clark Fork River, this takes out about 20 to 25 percent more phosphorus and nitrogen out of the Clark Fork River during the summer, summer months, which that's important because that's the algae growing season. That's what I like, and this is a very economical way to keep nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen out of the Clark Fork River and then put it to beneficial reuse. Yeah, and so we're in a stand of over, by now you figure there's over 100,000 poplar trees here. About, a, about 180 acres, 100,000 trees, roughly. That's amazing, and guess what folks, we're gonna show you tree number one. And it started out with some trees from Oregon? Exactly. The trees, the whips, were uh, purchased from a company in Oregon that's a, a commercial company. And they were chosen, the type of trees they are, were chosen for the climate here. Yeah. So there's, there's obviously different types of poplars, and this is the one that was most suitable for this climate and for our purposes. And then it's a drip system that goes through, you know, obviously has a hole by every tree. Yeah, so there's a big pipe that comes over from the plant outfall. It's yeah. about a mile long. Whoa. Comes, it's, and that's buried, or mostly buried. Yeah. And then it comes into these distribution heads and then into the drip system. Right, and so one thing that the trees are doing is that their root system is acting as a natural filtration unit, but the roots of the poplar tree is getting that effluent water and it's transforming it into a photosynthesis machine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, these trees are being grown for saw logs, for dimensional lumber. Yeah. A, a lot of popular plantations across the nations are grown for pulp wood, uh, paper pulp. Some are grown for hog fuel to put in boilers. Oh, yeah. But the market's pretty flat for pulp and hog fuel. So we chose to grow these for uh, uh, dimensional lumber. It's not really suitable for structural uh, lumber or exterior, but it's great for like, things like furniture, Oh, okay. And uh, trim and things like that. It's a soft wood, isn't it? Te technically, it's a hardwood. Yeah. But it okay. is it is a softwood, but it's, it's actually technically classified as a hardwood. Somebody told me that IKEA, about 80% of IKEA furniture is made with poplar. Oh, so there you go. Yeah. And I've used some of it in my home, uh, in my house, in some projects. What's nice about it, it has a really nice tight grain, straight yeah. grain, and there's no knots in it. So it's a really attractive looking finish on the Absolutely, on the yeah, and it stains up like, uh, you can make it look like anything. But um, yeah, it's it's easy to cut. I mean, if you're a do-it-yourselfer or yeah, yeah. something. It's not like oak where it'll go through saw blades like right and left. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it, to remove 20 or 25% more phosphorus and nitrogen, and yes. conventional, uh, conventional uh, treatment processes, would be about 10 times as much as what we put into this. This, this oh, was about a yeah. million dollars. This is a million dollars to create all these trees. So it will pay for itself. Yes. And it's renewable. And it's renewable. So these, what we're looking at here, are massive filters. Yes, they're sand filters. They actually don't use sand. They use ground uh, uh, garnet sand. Oh, yeah. It's really cool looking stuff. But the reason they use that is because it's heavier than sand, right. so it doesn't bleed out when you when you back back flush these. Oh yeah. But uh, the, our our effluent quality is really high. It's you know we, we clean the water up to really high right. levels. Like I'd mentioned, oh it's gray water, but you said by industry standards this water is cleaner Absolutely. than gray water. Absolutely. So right. that really helps. So this is filtering. Millions of gallons of water. Did you say you're pulling a million gallons over, a day? I'm over a million gallons a day. That's amazing. Yeah. And at that, you're reducing the amount of those super nutrients in the water that create the algae that then harm the fish and the whole ecosystem of the river. Right. And that you're removing 20 to 30 percent of those um, unwanted nu water nutrients. Exactly. We discharge about uh, 
0.3 parts per million of phosphorus in our effluent yeah. and about eight parts per million of nitrogen. And phosphorus is a limiting factor in the Clark Fork River. That's what really gets the algae going. Yeah. And uh, the DEQ, the Montana Department of Environmental Quality, did a study here a few years ago and determined the only part of the Clark Fork River to improve is below our outfall. So, uh, so hey, you got to feel good about that. We do, actually, yeah. we do. And it's got that element of sustainability that I think people oh. would really appreciate, right? It's, that it's that the trees are doing the work. How fantastic. Trees work when you're asleep, That's right. for instance. That's right. <laughs> no, it's very sustainable. This, like I say, we'll, we'll be, and we're going to start uh, phasing this in. So we're probably going to start harvesting a little earlier. We'll take out a section, replant, and then, uh, you know, market that, that, that lumber, and then, Replant and then take out another section, market that, uh, replant. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's it's very sustainable. You put the whips right back in, and the whips are going right back where their irrigation is. Right. So set them and forget them. That's right. <laughs> I know. It's really a beautiful, peaceful kind of environment. And then there's some heavy equipment you guys use to maintain the area. Yeah. Yep. So what they do is they grow algae inside these tubes. And they grow this algae, and they got grow lights in here for the. When you when you fly over an airplane, you can actually see this. You can see the lights, right? So we use microorganisms. These guys use algae to do the same thing. Yeah. And then what they do is then they remove the algae out of the water, and then use it for, you know, beneficial reuse. I've seen their lab results on how low they get the phosphorus and nitrogen. It's unbelievable. Like you were saying, it was almost undetectable after this treatment. Right. Is it right now economically viable? Can they well, that's, treat enough water with the, the algae to make it work? I think that's the big question. Yeah, the ratio of that. Part. Right. And this, I think they're treating about 30,000 gallons a day. And then this, our plant treats 7.5 million do uh, gallons a day. A day. Yeah. 7.5 million gallons of water treated <laughs> a day. 30,000 is, is it's a start. It's a start. <laughs>